everyone, Stompy 47A here. Today we're going to be looking at the two new Tier 6 Taosiar ships. The adapted battle cruiser from the latest Infinity Lockbox and the adapted destroyer from the Lobby Store. Both these ships existed as Tier 5s but have been thoroughly modernised to Tier 6 specifications. Both ships have now got dual specialist bridge officer slots and interestingly, the destroyer is now equipped with a heavy weapon. Most importantly, the essence of what made these two ships really good when they were just tier 5s has been retained and improved upon. Let's look at the um, adapted battlecruiser first. Uh, the styling has been refined from the tier 5 version, but it's still meant to um, make us think of the Narada from the first JJ Star Trek movie. And this new tier 6 look makes it look more sleeker and modern. I much prefer it to the tier 5 version. Here it is. Um, it's just a much cleaner design. For those who do have the tier 5 version, you will recognize the familiar 4 4 weapons layout and balance console layout. Most importantly, the Universal Bridge Commander Station has been retained, and um, so it's allowing you for a wide variety of um, build approaches and very usable by any of the three careers. The Lieutenant Science Bridge Office Station now has a command specialization, and Lieutenant TAC now has Intel. The Ship Mastery is pretty much standard for a battle cruiser. It is rare to see this type of Ship Mastery, but some you know number of ships in the game do have it. So Tier 1 is a physical and kinetic resistance buff. Um, tier 2 is an increase of 15% to your crit severity. Tier 3, energy and radiation resist. Tier 4, a 10% boost to hull capacity. The trait is called Assimilated Power Conduit. So when you activate Emergency Powder to Auxiliary, you get a 5% critical chance and a 25% critical, uh, critical severity boost to your exotic damage abilities. I think this will be a powerful trait for science builds and you can effectively have this trait up 40 seconds out of every 60. Um, the console is called the Enhanced Indoctrination Nanite Dispersal System. This console is an upgrade version from the um, Tier 5 one. Uh, it now has a passive 15% uh, turn rate boost and it adds 3 power to your auxiliary subsystem. Now this console pretty much does the same as it did before. It's an AoE damage and disable of up to 5 targets within 3 kilometers, and I'll show you more of that shortly. Um, now we go on to the Adapted Destroyer. So again, those who had the Tier 5 will find this familiar, but it now comes with a heavy weapons slot. And the heavy weapon is called, interestingly, the Heavy Escort Hyper Excited Ion Stream Projector. Essentially, it is a 360 degree weapon that will chain damage and increase it to 10% per, per chain of up to five foes, but those five foes have to be directly behind each other in their rear arc um, of your primary foe. Um, this is important because it will not chain to secondary targets if they are anywhere except for the rear arc. The weapon itself does electrical damage, but since it is a weapon, it does get buffed by emergency powder weapons and other Cat 2 damage buffs. It gets um, uh, Crit X at Ultra Rare. Uh, that's a 2% um, crit chance increase and 10% severity and the normal um, accuracy and damage at Epic. Now the Starship Mastery for this ship is again fairly rare. Um, you don't see this combination too often. At Tier 1 you get a 5% accuracy boost. At Tier 2, 15% crit severity. Tier 3, 2.5% crit chance and at tier 4 an energy and kinetic damage buff. Clearly they want this to be an attack ship. The trait is called a Synergenistic Tactical System which provides a buff to um, uh, exotic uh, particle generators and control expertise when you activate cannon rapid fire, surgical strikes or reroute reserves to weapons and it lasts for 15 seconds. Now this is interesting because if you can get 
Canon rapid fire down to its global cooldown, which is 15 seconds, and it's that's not difficult to do. You can you can have near 100 percent uptime of this trait. It's definitely worth a look at, um, to, particularly if you have um, you can't add points in your skill tree um, because you have to have them somewhere else. This trait could be really really important if you run cannons. Now in the bridge officer slots, your lieutenant commander universal has intel specialization, and lieutenant universal has pilot specialization. Uh, the console is the enhanced shrapnel torpedo console um, which uh, is as before um, the, on the tier 5 ship and again it's meant to draw parallels from um, the Narada from the first JJ movie such as this. Um, it shoots nine shrapnel torpedoes which then split into four mini projectiles that do high AOE kinetic damage and can do 50% shield penetration. The passive buff for this console is an impressive 3% 3 critical chance boost. Now again, I will show you this console in action shortly. Um, On to the warp cores for this ship. Each ship comes with a Tal Shiar adapted Borg warp core at Mark 12, very rare. Um, you get a passive buff to hull um, regeneration, um, and um, the power boosts favour the auxiliary power subsystem. What is disappointing is that this core still gets EWS at ultra rare and not um, amp. For those who don't know what EWS is, it is a 1% prop chance when hit with energy weapons to give you a plus 10 power boost to your weapon subsystem. Amp is a much better modifier and it's a shame they didn't change this core when it, um, for the tier 6 versions. Um, the warp core and the two consoles are granted 2 and 3 piece set bonus. This, the 2 piece is a buff to passive hull generation adding 2.5% per minute to your base stats. You also get um, plus 10% to all shield healing which doesn't include your passive healing ability. The three piece is now very interesting um, considering how EPG works now in Tribble and the fact that radiation resists on NPCs and players seems to be lower than other resistances. So when you use any type of exotic damage and this is including charged particle bursts and, and tachyon beam, you do extra shield penetrating radiation damage for 15 seconds. Now this is buffed by part gens and therefore it's exotic radiation which we know from other ships like the Enterprise J can be quite powerful if you're if you spec properly. So let's see these two consoles in action from a unique view that you can't really see from, you can't really see in the game. First of all the shrapnel console Secondly, the indoctrination console. Now notice how it is chained to the pets of that ship. And now look at the three-piece radiation damage attacking that ship for 15 seconds. Okay, this ship being attacked has no spec trees active and is uh, has three neutronium consoles and full auxiliary power. It basically melted that ship and my build has a total of eight um, exotic particle generators, so not much at all. Um, goes to show that uh, how much um, exotic radiation with no resistance can melt a ship. Uh, so in summary, the tier 6 treatment of these ships has built upon some very very solid foundations. My personal favourite is still the battle cruiser, but the heavy weapon slot on the destroyer um, makes it more potent than it was. The only issue I've really got with the destroyer is it's a bit slow for a dual beam or dual heavy cannon ship. The single cannons array, a single single cannons or arrays could go well nicely with it. It would just struggle to keep up with other escorts. So it's sort of between a cruiser and an escort in a way. So um, yeah, so thank you guys. Uh, ask me questions if you like. Ask me in game at Sniper47A or and I'll see you around the Star Trek universe. Bye.